Hey, good morning. It's time now for Coach's Corner, live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. I'm Tim Torres. Thanks for tuning us in. We do it every Saturday morning from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School. This morning, we jump into spring sports. We're going to talk track. Madison Boys track uh, coach Scott Holcroft in with us this morning. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. And you? Good. A little tired. A little but tired from last night. We'll talk about last night coming up in just a little bit. It's, uh, it's track season. Let's go back. This is how many years now? For you, uh, we took over head coach in 2000, so 19, 19 years. 19 years. Yeah. Did yeah. you uh, did you envision being with it that long? No, I didn't. And and you know I've loved it all. I you know doing football. I I kind of hung that up this year at the end of the season, uh, just because you know it was f full year round. And sure. With my kids and wife, I I decided time to give that up and, right. and focus more with this. It, over 19 seasons. How has track changed? You know, it, it's it's really interesting. We've seen a lot of, of things, like you said, changes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just the, how the kids train. Uh, you know, that's one of the biggest things right now. Um, I know when I ran back in the late 80s, you know, you trained upstairs in the gym. We still do that. You know, compared to what some of the other people have in their facilities, it, it kind of puts us behind. But, you know, we've got a great strength trainer now with Jay and, um, you know, the stuff he does. And, and not just him, as my coaches, myself, we improvise, you know, with every corner of the gym, every hallway, you know, we bring in hurdles. We, you know, got blocks on a piece of plywood so that we can practice block starts inside. And, and so, you know, just trying to get an edge how did how did with with less facilities way back when how did how did how did you get by with it yeah everybody went out <laughs> <laughs> it didn't matter what the weather was you were outside and and you know the other day we went out uh, it was 24 to 25 degrees and and not one kid complained mm -hmm. they all suited up and said let's go yeah. and out we went and you know we get our workout in pretty quick and get the thing done and get back in and uh, but you know it, it, it has evolved a lot and you know a lot more meat better meat things like that it's it's a and it's this way in every sport it's the bigger faster stronger theory but I know a lot more focus now than then has been on the bigger, faster, stronger. And, and kids are kind of training. Well, I mean, you, I mean, you do it as part of your curriculum, but now they're training kind of year round. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter what sports. You know, we've got kids from just about every sport at the high school on the track team, and and it doesn't matter what you're doing. You're going to help every one of your sports that you participate in by doing this stuff. And you know, that's how Jay's kind of set the programs up, where you're you are lifting, you're doing band workouts, you're doing core stuff. So you know, you're working every part of your body. Body, you know two to three days a week depending on what week it is mm -hmm. and uh, and then you know the kids benefit in football in basketball in soccer in mm -hmm. swimming in wrestling you know it helps them all the way across the board do you, do you have any kids that that just do track slash cross country uh, I have a, a few not many mm -hmm. most of them you know are two sport but I have a couple kids that come out and they just run track yeah. they enjoy it they enjoy being outside you know doing that and uh, and that's just the one sport that they do do you do you see a difference though in the the competitiveness or their their athleticism because they only do one sport or does it kind of run equal across the board you know it really depends on the kid uh -huh. um, <clears throat> you know that's the nice thing about track when you're going to get out what you put in yeah. you know and and the harder you train the better you're going to be and and you know all the guys have been working really hard so far this spring and uh, you know with track there's 15 positions or 15 events so the kids find where they fit in mm -hmm. and, and then uh, that would be i think one of the hardest things for me as a track coach would be able to identify you know who can do what and what's going to be a strength and if you have a kid maybe let's say that comes in that that I don't know what I want to do or I don't know what I can do where do you start you know we we watch them run watch them what they can do do a few little things with them and and it kind of gives us an idea of where to maybe start with them and then you know then we fine-tune and move them back and forth a little bit I had a, a senior come in this year first time wanted to run he did some sprint workouts with us and stuff and and you know he did okay and then 
we were like, why don't you try throwing to it? And he's just fallen in love with the discus, you know, and he's out there. And I mean, athletic kid as can be. And, and I think, you know, he's going to probably turn out to be a pretty good discus thrower this year. And, and then it, you go back and think, wow, what if? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. But, you know, we've th there's always a place for everybody on the track team. I mean, yeah. we can find it. And, and again, it's finding everybody's niche and, and running track. Running track is, is a whole lot different than running cross country. Yeah, it is. It's, you know, round the track. <laughs> you're not out <laughs> getting a little uh, sightseeing while you're running. So, yeah, it is it is different. And <clears throat> there are kids that want to run track that don't run cross country. And there are kids that are running cross country that don't run track. And, you know, that's one thing that we're really working on, trying to get that across the board and, and get them in both sports. Number wise this season uh, we're around 25 so mm -hmm. not bad I wish it had a few more right uh, you know the more the merrier the, like you said earlier yep. the better the competition in practice and and that just drives everybody to be you know even better but uh, it's a great group of, of 25 guys what uh, what's the I guess the the prime number or the ideal number of track kids Oh, you, know, <laughs> you look at some of these other schools and when they bring two buses, you know, to <laughs> some of the meets, that'd be the great number. But, uh, you know, if, if I can push 35 to maybe 40 kids, mm -hmm. we can usually fill a really, really solid team. Coach, let's go back and reflect uh, on a year ago. Let's, let's kind of talk about your season and how it progressed. You know, we, uh, we had some ups and downs, some injuries early as we progressed through the season things. You know, we started moving a few guys here and there weren't happy or I shouldn't say happy but just wasn't getting what we thought we could out of the, some guys and and what they were doing and and the way the season was going we started moving them around and uh, you know things really ended on a, a real positive with uh, you know like Dante and Blair and Bryce and and um, you know we had uh, Otto in the discus so sure. we had a, a good group of guys you know we took the regional and was hoping to take that next step and came close <laughs> just couldn't quite and I think it's really helping drive these guys this year and, and you you'd like to see of course when you get a kid as a freshman and then they uh, progress to sophomore junior and then senior year senior year as all coaches do want the seniors to finish out with a flourish yeah exactly and and you know they've really set them up themselves up well this year to to do that uh, you know the thing is we go through Bloomington to get there and and yep. you know their distance is I mean it's just a phenomenal meet so mm -hmm. they've got their work cut out for them they know what they have to do and and they're working toward that you guys start before everybody else does you start I think that the indoor meet start in February is that right yeah yeah they start the uh, mid mid of mid of February so when do you actually start when can you officially start your practice season then uh, it's February usually around the 10th 11th mm -hmm. and then so you know second week or not saying like third week of February because mm -hmm. you got to have your 10 practices sure. is usually right. when the indoor season starts. So we've been three weekends now and, mm -hmm. and come close. So we'll wait and see what happens today and then hopefully you know some people will be on spring break and we might get somebody in. Right. And you, you, you look at, at the progression from last year. How many seniors did you graduate last year? Uh, too many. <laughs> uh, yeah, about eight or nine. Yeah. So that that really takes its toll. And and those guys. And there were a few more that, you know, had other things, wanting to get ready for college that they didn't come out. But through the, that class, there was usually about twelve to fourteen kids. So mm -hmm. you know, when you carry a group like that for four years, that really right. really depletes <laughs> the cupboard a little bit. <laughs> you have to. You have to reload, and and as a coach, do you do you look at okay? Here's my seniors this year, and I got to get somebody ready for next year. Do you, I mean, no coach wants to look that far ahead, but do you kind of in your mind always prepare? You know, we we've always luckily had a good mix of kids mm -hmm. of class to class, and uh, you know, right now last night we took the four by four relay up to Taylor. Um, you know, I had Dante who's a senior, Bryce running on it who's a junior, Blair's a senior, and then uh, Jack Kelsey's a freshman. So he got his first taste of indoor last night, right. uh, running in a varsity meet. 
the week before he was out of town, so Nick Sinners went or mm -hmm. Center went. Uh, you know, he's first year sophomore. Right. So you know, so we've got some really good core guys mm -hmm. that are getting some experience with this. And, and that experience, especially for a young man or even a young lady on the girls' side of things that have never been to a I want to say a varsity track meet, but a track meet in general, but a varsity especially, can be kind of over overwhelming. Oh, yeah. I mean, there were teams from all over. From, you know, Indy, Greensburg was there. Uh, South Bend's were there, Fort Wayne. So, you know, these are teams we won't see again right. pretty much till you know, a state meet. And, and I mean, there were some of the best in the state there last night. And, and to let those guys run against and just be around and see how those athletes prepare for a race, mm -hmm. you know, how, let our younger guys warm up and, and watch and our seniors show them how we want, you know, what we do before a meet right. and seriousness. You know, it's, it's all going to help in the long run as the rest of the season progresses. What about your uh, – you, you've had three meets. Talk about the, each one a little bit where, where you kind of uh, – your, your results and where you're you know as you as a coach kind of where you're progressing at 3-3 yeah there were some guys that ran early on and uh you know even in december mm -hmm. open meets or sure. club meets things like that which we can't be associated sure. with them but so but it, were, as as a coach though that's okay yeah oh <laughs> yeah yeah i'm <laughs> loving it that these guys are out there taking themselves to meets and right and getting you know into shape so we had about five guys that did that this year uh so then we got into like you said the end of february mm -hmm. started our indoor we went to uh, ball state the first weekend um they came out ran really well i know bryce broke his uh or ran his best time uh there uh dante ran his best time and then christian bell and xavier cosby went and uh, xavier broke his time from early on so you know i was like wow this is great you know guys right. running so then we go to wabash the next weekend they all uh, drop again you know do better and then last night well, we threw our four by eight in, or four by four at Wabash because we finally had gotten everybody out and starting getting practices in. And um, so Dante ended up, uh, he's ranked, I believe it was like 35th right now, 34th in the state. Uh, he missed the cut time by two hundredths of a second. So we were hoping last night he could drop just a little bit. Uh, Bryce, I think he ended up about 70th in the state. So, you know, for those guys going into the season now, it, it's going to pay off. And, of course, with indoor, there's big and little. They right. use the football uh classes mm -hmm. so of course we're running against the jeff we're running right. against the carmel the ben davis sure you know all those so it makes it a little tougher to right. get in um then our four by eight ended up right now i think we're uh 33rd 32nd somewhere in there mm -hmm. so we're hoping you know if somebody's right. on spring break and can't go then they will you know take the next best team right so there's an outside shot right but We'll wait and see about Monday or Tuesday what happens. Those you're running against those bigger schools, though, and it, I mean this conversation has come up a million times on this program where you're you're competing against bigger schools and it's a whole lot tougher. However, you know you're talking about preparing for the end of the season. Yeah, you know <clears throat> when you get to the state finals, it's all one class. Mm -hmm. So you know I when I took over, I started doing that. I got us in over at Brown County. We go to Greensburg. You know I spread us out. We start going to the Midwest Prep Meet, which is uh, uh, you had to qu uh, qualify for that one, which is up in Indy. And mm -hmm. and you know just trying to get some of those guys that need <clears throat> that competition to see it before we get to the end and go you know what just happened right. i haven't seen anything like this right and, and to to get into that kind of competition and to see it and again you, you mentioned it you know at, at your indoor meets when kids go in for the first time and they see other teams and bigger teams and how they warm up and what they do to prepare you hope it rubs off on on everybody so it's it's it makes your team stronger yeah it really does and and you know the the younger guys and, and not just the younger guys the whole team knows you know how good some of the guys are mm -hmm. and they don't want to let them down you know mm -hmm. they so they're out there practicing as hard as they can to push those other guys it's pulling them through and and the competition just makes practice unbelievable 
Coach, you talked about uh, what, 25 kids. Let's talk about the 25 kids. How many seniors you have? Uh, we have five seniors this year. Uh, the neat thing about these guys is there's almost one in every kind of aspect of, of the track. Mm -hmm. You know, we have our sprinters, we have our mid distance, we have our distance, we have our throwers, and, and you know, track's kind of a, a four or five team sport right. that comes together. You know, <laughs> on a on a certain day is a whole team. But um, yeah, we've got Dante. Uh, um, you know, really anchoring and, and leadership has been great. Seth Gears, our returning thrower, you know, he's done it for four years and he's been working really hard. Uh, Andrew Beaumont is one of our longer distance runners. It's been running for four years, mm -hmm. doing a good job. You know, Blair had a phenomenal year last year coming out and never running track. Sure. And, uh, you know, we're, we're really looking for him to lead that mid-distance core group, and, and he's doing that. And then uh, Dylan Ray came out. He's a senior, first time coming out, swimmer, mm -hmm. and uh, he's just loving it. And yeah. it's great addition for us. You, you have those additions. <laughs> <laughs> and it's those surprise additions that you get that you're really not expecting. And, man, when you can plug them in and they take off, it's it's got to help a program. Oh, it does. And, and, you know, I've had many kids come out their senior year just because, you know, it's like, man, school's almost over. My high school, I want to do one more thing. And they come out and then they look at me at the end of the track season and go, wish I'd done this four years. <laughs> <laughs> me too. And that's, you know, that's, that's what you want to hear, but that's not really what right. you want to hear. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Talk about the rest of your team. Yeah, we, uh, we have a lot of returners Julian Sample runs cross country him and Jacob Howe so they're part of our distance group Hayden Todd uh, long jumps and does sprints for me he's a three-year uh, letter guy or will be uh, Seth Hartwell first time throwing for us um, so we're excited to get him out coach Lambs recruited some guys Noah Caswell Tucker Adams so we're picking up some of the football players sure. coming out with us um, of course Bryce you know Bryce is in his third year and one of the top sprinters around right. and uh, you know the sky's the limit for him also this year and mm -hmm. and uh, I mean he's shown improvement indoors and and you know it's just going to keep dropping um, uh, Adam Combs is another thrower that's new this year uh, Nick Sinner and Parker Jones Baylor Rubel you know those guys have all just joined us mm -hmm. uh, from basketball sure. and stuff and and football you know, training has been going on, so those guys are coming over too. Right. So we're, you know, we're really picking up some some great guys. Uh, Brady Royalties uh, back this year again as part of our mid distance group, and then then we have a group of about seven or eight freshmen. Mm -hmm. So I was excited with that. Your your numbers again, as you mentioned, twenty five, not as many as you'd like, but still a, a pretty good number. In, in this t group of twenty five, do you have a a where you can look at it and go this is going to be our strength this is this is where we're going to excel yeah i mean right now you know we're looking um of course we haven't done a lot of field sure. events yet because of the weather and right. finishing getting pits out and stuff but you know right now with what we've been doing uh, you know, the sprints and the mid distance. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the big thing will come down at the end of, you know, looking at the individual compared to a relay. Mm -hmm. You know, what's the best chance of moving on right. from level to level? And then we'll right. decide from there, you know, at the end of the season, kind of, are we going to go after a relay or are we going to let them run individually right. and, and how that pans out? What's, uh, other than the obvious, what's the, the, the biggest difference indoor to outdoor? Ah, uh, man, run, I mean, it, it is so different, you know, talking to the guys last night after they ran and, and the other weeks, you know, they come around running that four by four and they're like, it's so weird having a lap in and you still got a lap to go. Right. You know, and just knowing the mentality of sure. where you really would be on the track, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's a whole different race. Right. And, and the, you know, the indoor, it's drier, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Warmer, nicer, but sure. and sharper curves, you know, right. that makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I had never thought of it, but they ran at Bloomington a couple meets and they have a bank track. Mm -hmm. And so when they did that, they have to add time onto their final time because it's an advantage by having the track banked. Oh, wow. Yeah. I had no idea. So, 
know yeah. because you can keep your speed up a right. little bit better in the turns than you mm -hmm. can on a flat track right. so yeah i i had never heard of that and there was an article i was reading the other day when mm -hmm. i was looking at our times right. and they had to adjust times because of that what about uh let's kind of look at the outdoor season for you when do you open things up outside uh we got two weeks with spring break mm -hmm. and then we come back and start on that thursday mm -hmm. so we'll have a home meet um at home with South Ripley, Shaw, and us. Mm. Uh, then we go on the road to Greensburg, I believe, and then we come back home for another home meet with four teams. Uh, and then later on in the season, about midway through, we have one more home meet. Jennings comes, and right. we'll do seniors. And so we were glad to get – we switched our schedule a little bit because we were supposed to only have two home meets and then four next year. Right. So we m made the switch. Jennings agreed so we could have three and three every year. Right. Right. And so it gives us a little later one so we don't get snowed out and all that. <laughs> <laughs> how many how many meets typically outside do you, you guys usually have? Around 10 to 12 just depends. Um, you know, there's a couple of the showcase ones where sure. we'll take a couple guys or a relay team, you know, things like that. But usually 10, 11 if the weather cooperates. Right. Do you have, you have multiple meets during the week? I mean, is there an ideal schedule where you can have – two meets a week or how does it work with track some years we we have had like a tuesday thursday saturday mm -hmm. pretty tough you right. know but early on it's fine because we're pretty much running through the meets anyway right. and it's mainly training you know when we have some of these early meets everybody's in four events the guys you know come on coach and i'm like you know this is more of a practice <laughs> than you know right. a, a me we're looking at what happens at the end of the season that's when we'll start resting and and pulling guys you know and putting mm -hmm. them in specialty meet or events right. or what right. they're going to focus on so you know it, it changes as the season goes on of how you use guys right. and where you use them and and like i said a lot of it you know we change guys around too right. you know we've talked to some of them about guess what you may be running the 400s. You may be running the 800 today. Right. You may be running the mile. Right. You may be dropping down. You right. know, and and just getting their bodies used to different events and things. Are they are they pretty receptive to to that kind of thing? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they they see what the success is and what the future is, mm -hmm. and you know, most of them when you say that, they go, okay. Now, if I take some of those guys and say you're going to the two mile, I get a look. But <laughs> <laughs> what about uh, let's talk a little bit about conference? Uh, Who's your hills conference? in every sport always have to compete in yeah I, i've been you know looking at some of the stuff online of course with indoor and they've gotten preseason stuff out and uh you know right off the bat they had floyd i think they were i think 12th in the state uh they've had a couple really good times with a couple guys uh then they dropped off the the stuff in new albany they jumped back on and i think they're in the top 10 now as a team uh so you know it yeah. it's all always tough and we know that and, right. and it'll be a Jennings this year so it's closer so sure. makes it nice but you know the guys know and and once you get out of conference you go to sectionals mm -hmm. and of course there's Jeffersonville sure. and regionals is most of our conference teams minus I think East and Floyd and New Albany so mm -hmm. you're going to run them again so you right. might as well get used to it. Well and when you see teams multiple times and and is it does it kind of work in track like it does other sports you you, you i mean you're not you're competing against other guys you're kind of competing against yourself but do you do you prepare yourself for guys you know you're going to be running against yeah you know that's that's the big thing you know and and we talk about that sometimes in the locker room you know about all right you know here's you know what's this guy doing today right how hard are you going to practice? What's mm -hmm. he, you know, is he outside? Is right. he taking the day off because it's raining? No. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it does help drive those guys, and they have that in the back of their minds, the guy that beat them last year or the guy that they beat, but it was like, wow, I don't know if I can do it again. You Do you guys, I mean, I know there's there's all kinds of records that are kept. Do you guys... I mean, do you do you break a lot of records? Personal, I know you break a lot of personal records, but do you break a lot of school records? Uh, off and on. Uh -huh. I mean, it, it, it depends. Um, one thing that uh, Coach Collins is helping me with right now, and I, I've worked on it a lot, he's got more time, is we're working on a top ten list. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's gone back and been going to the library sure. every day <laughs> and, you know, going through trying to find anything we can. Right. And so we're getting a – pretty good grip on that mm -hmm. and and you know that's one of the things that I want to get up in the locker room because you know a kid may not be able to break the school record but 
they could be the top 10 miler ever sure. or the top 10 you know pole vaulter or right you know and and that's big you know that's a goal those kids can set and try and achieve do you have uh i mean do you have are your athletes do they do they recognize or realize that maybe a record's in reach do they does that drive them oh it definitely does and and uh, you know just that and and knowing and and the kids that have run before they know you know what we run into at regionals and and right now bloomington north ranked second in the state i mean they're putting up some phenomenal times and um you know they know we gotta be there we right. have to and and i mean they ran there last year as juniors or sophomores and right. they know what it takes to get out and and that you know that time just kind of eats at their stomach you know and <laughs> drives them to to get there junior high program uh i know they had about 70 kids for call out so uh, -huh. uh that's great mm -hmm. you know the the more the merrier right. you know and, and it does help carry over and and i like to go to those meets at home especially so i can kind of see the kids and and you know we the, the older guys help them in practice if they're having something because we all practice on the same track and, right and uh, so when we're taking a rest or something i encourage those guys they go and work the meets for them so you know they get to see them they get to see them in their sweatsuits and things and they go wow that's what i want right and again you know it's it's seeing the older kids and you know that's the feeder programs it works the same as it does in every other sport but it works that way in track too yes it does it does and and the other big thing you know that's coming up is the molly race mm -hmm. and uh, the boys and girls track team and cross country teams work that and, mm -hmm. and you know that's just another thing that we go to to let the kids see us and know that you know hey there's a future in this right Scott, we appreciate your time. God, I don't know where 30 minutes go, but it goes real quick. And uh, we appreciate you coming in today. Of course, boys track at Madison. you got a couple of weeks until, three weeks, I guess, until you, you actually have a home meet. Yeah, yeah, unless somebody, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And unless we qualify. Sure, and then sure. we'll be on the road again next weekend. Yeah. And then after that, then, yeah. yeah, all things focus on outdoors. On outdoors, and I'm, I'm sure everybody anxious to get outside. Yes, they are. We appreciate you coming in today. Thank you. All right, that's uh, Coach Scott Holcroft, Madison Boys Track Coach. We appreciate him coming in this morning talking about boys track at Madison. Don't forget, you can join us next Saturday morning live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop. It is Coach's Corner. We'll be talking athletic training with the Dave Pappenheim, Madison athletic trainer, and some of his staff. We'll do that next Saturday morning live from McDonald's. Until then, for A.J. Bramer, I'm Tim Torch. We'll see you next time on Coach's Corner on Works 96.7.